yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, I tune into the HBCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, she tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss. Yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes, sir. and pay attention, Boy, cause he gonna teach a lesson. Yes. Ball is down, it's kick is distance. up, oh my, it's a <laughs> with the field goal, final 38, 37, Panthers with the upset, unbelievable finish, I can tell you it is mad how hard. This is Dr. Gaville with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Welcome to episode 555 of Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show covering the sporting HBCU dash for all things HBCU sports for institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. We share insights and information on the HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Keanu Cavill, along with my co-host, Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Mike Washington is still on assignment, so I have none other than uh, A.D. Drew, along with David L. Rose, better known as Dave, and Charles Bishop, as I said. We're filming from our home suited studios and sitting alive to KCOH 1238 Studios in Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, multi-Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, who we saw at the press conference on he does in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from Houston, Texas. Charles is smiling today. <laughs> Some people are still on the ledge. Others are not. Dave may be one of those. As I teased him, I told you we're shooting from our home. He told us if this was his backyard, he wouldn't even be doing the show. <laughs> AD Drew is having a good time as he continues to do the work and make sure that we can get it done and get it on the show in terms of the intro. I wanted to kick things off, and we'll play that maybe a little later. But with that being said, just so you get an idea of what was to be out there, I had to kick two weeks ago as we kicked things off this morning. You had Clark Atlanta stuns everybody uh, in the HBCU committee, community two weeks ago with the FCS kick, if you would, in terms of send thunder last week. Well, this week I had to cheat, do the cheat code, Charles, and I had Kobe Cavill with the big run that was uh, faced off of everybody, and I'm getting my updates and bleeps and all those kind of things that folks said, catch this man if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Continue to do his thoughts. And then I was going to end it with the uh, fifth overtime, two-point conversion finally made by Prairie View uh, to get their first conference win of the season and literally get them off of death row, it seems like, since we're using some hip-hop terminology here. I'm sure Dave would appreciate that just a little bit Ooh. in terms of what he's able to do. Folks don't realize, but certainly those that follow him know what I'm referencing. Big time, big time weekend. Games do not let you down. If you're not following the HBCU sports culture, that's on you. With that being said, Charles, how you doing this morning? Doing well, Doc. Doing well. Uh, it is officially a Red Cup season as uh, we <laughs> kick off uh, – the, the month of homecomings and whatnot, but uh, I tell you what, uh, we were close. We were close to at least one program for sure looking toward basketball season, but it staves it off. You know, now we we set for October, and, and the buzzword for the night, I heard it from about three or four different coaches, consistency. So that's that's what we're looking for in October, we'll see some consistent play from week in and week out. I'm not sure you're going to get a lot of that this season, other than maybe <laughs> right. North Carolina Central. Uh, Eagles, it seems like they understand what it means to be inconsistency. 
And boy, I'll say this with the red cup. Mike is such a bad influence. He is truly <laughs> Dave, <laughs> as a uh, Phi Beta Sigma, certainly understands big brother tendencies and how they can lean you in one direction or the other. Oftentimes good, sometimes tantalizing. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and we're not even going to get into the board of corporal uh, repair, not punishment, but uh, get right. <laughs> Andy Drew, how you doing today? Driving the First motorcycle. Off. I, I want to uh, bring in a comment from my brother, Brian Fulford, from the BCSN Sports Wrap. Dave, he wants to know, are you outside because you're on the ledge? <laughs> I'm out of <laughs> – I got on the ledge last week. <laughs> I haven't jumped yet, but, you know, you know it's, it's, it's rough sled, man. So he's looking down there though. Like, I'm looking, I'm looking dead at it. I'm staring at it at this rate. <laughs> and looking at the canyon. Uh, but no, yeah, Dr. Yeah, Bill, I, 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 I'm doing fine. I'm uh questioning the overtime play calling in the PV Grambling game, aka the State Fair Classic, because they obviously ran out of two point plays to run. It seemed like because those plays were like, huh, what? That's the best you got. But anyway, but I do have one question for you, Dr. Kabir. When are we going? And I know you have an inside track to this. When are we going to get our official Kobe Kabir interview, Dr. Kabir? <laughs> ah, yeah, that's a nice one. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. I, well, I had promised him once he got in the end zone, but the way that game ended, it just didn't seem right to do it at that point. We needed that <laughs> catch and touchdown be the one that sealed the deal. And as sports will have you uh, think about life differently, we understand that that was not the final play. Uh, that was the difference in the game. As Southern came storming back, and to their credit, they won in overtime. Um, and so we'll see if we can – uh, get that before the end of the season with a couple of more plays by Kobe. But great point. You're right. I do have the inside track. We've been working on it. <laughs> um, and to your point, it's been uh, intriguing as a couple of the D2 games, particularly out of the SIEC, shift to today. Um, so I'm sure that you, um, as you do your D2 and give us that platform, we'll talk a little bit about the CIAA that had the two major uh, poll ranking games of the week. We'll let you know how that went. looks like the Virginians woke up off the mat and said, we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, Dave, uh, besides the fact that the, the ledge um, appears differently than your backyard, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great, guys. Um, appreciate the invite. You know, I I watched a decent chunk of games yesterday. Um, Delaware State impressed me a lot, even though they couldn't close out the deal last night, yesterday. Yeah, they 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 impressed me a lot. I got to watch a lot of that game prior to ANT's uh drubbing, so to speak. Um, but overall, I think we're we're in a good place. We're in a good place with Delaware State. I think Delaware State is might be more of a threat to the MEAC than folks aren't discussing right now. Mm. I like that. I like that call when you talk about also um if football was only played in the half. You know, it might be a whole different story today. Delaware State um, be undefeated. That's not just uh, A and T. That's with other games in Grambling as well. Go ahead, AD. I say Delaware State would be undefeated if you only had to play the halftime. <laughs> and, and the thing, or they would at least be, they at least be out here be looking like Clark Atlanta with a tie. Well, <laughs> well, the thing about Delaware State, man, if I watched the end of that game and the big thing for me, and I said, ah, oh, Campbell, let them score at the end. Give them right. enough time to score. Mm. They could have milked the clock, got the field goal, and walked off and, and ran with the game. Yep, yeah, Those are things that you continue to look at. But you're right. When you get in MEAC play, uh, usually you can kind of check off. Delaware State is a win. I'm not sure if they're going to be checking off that much this year. You, you better be ready to get your hats. And it's like Valley. It's always a tough place to play. Not enough for Alcorn yesterday. Is they kind of got off sluggish, but they got it going, so they got a win. But let's get in these top seven. Uh, update scores from the mid-major. We'll take a first break and we'll come back and we'll do our uh, reveal of week number five. But in week number four, when you start out with those receiving votes, starting at Texas College, they jumped out to two victories in a row. Uh, they had a tough conference loss the week before last. Well, they were against Langston, HBCU matchup, and Langston hadn't had a win. So I was fascinated to see what Texas College could do. 
Well, Langston does what they seem to do always do to Texas College Steers, which is beat them. So Texas College Steers lost to Langston 35 to 25. Uh, Virginia Union Panthers bounced back as they improved to two and two as college Texas College Steers fall to two and two. Uh, they defeated Shaw Bears and dominated 42 to seven. This is the Virginia Union Panthers that we all thought we knew. Not only did Virginia Union get off the mat, so did Virginia State after both of them lost last week. Virginia State Trojans improved to 2-2 two two as well, and now they're 1-0 in the conference because they defeated Fayetteville State Broncos 35-18, to which is the final. Everybody's like, hold on, they lost last week. Yes, they lost last week, but it did not count for them as a loss in the standing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wait until you get that information and you digest it. With that being said, number saying Florida Memorial Lions, they lost – uh, so they fall to one, two, and one um, as they were ranked seven. At number six, West Virginia State, the Yellow Jacks are quietly winning. Conference win over Western Virginia Westland, 48 to 22, dominated them as they improved to three and one, two and oh on the season. At number five, Fayetteville State Broncos, as I told you, they lost to Virginia State Trojan, 35 to 18. At number four, the Shaw Bears lost to Virginia Union Panthers, 42 to seven. Uh, both of them, well, Shaw Bears fall to three and two, one and one on the season. And Fayetteville, they improve, they fall also to two and two, one and one on the season. At number three, Winston Salem State defeated Bowie State Bulldogs 28 to 14. This game was on HBCU Go, so I had a chance to watch it. While Winston Salem State pretty much dominated the game, it was actually close. They pulled away late in the second half to kind of give themselves a little more comfort room as they improved to four and one, two and oh in the CIAA. It looks like Winston-Salem State is for real and will be in the mix for a while, much like number two. Clark Atlanta Panthers, they fell behind early, but they uh, come from behind, defeat Flame Dragons, and pull away late. 38-28 to was the final. This is one of those watch-out games that Charles told us to watch out, and for a half, it certainly was one to keep your eyes on. But the Panthers are continuing with their magical season. I don't know if it's magical anymore. At this point, uh, there's something to be reckoned with. 4-0-1, right. and 3-0 oh and and oh in conference play. Um, and they seem like they will be in the race the rest of the way. And number one, Johnson C. Smith, another one of those surprise teams. Uh, but I guess at this point, uh, it shouldn't be a surprise anymore if you've been listening to us. They defeat Bluefield State Big Blue, um, and they do what you to, do to a team that you uh, should be better. They dominate them 42-3 to three as they get it done there. Uh, let's get into the major division and tell you what happens here. The major division continues to be shape shifting, except for maybe the two at the top. Uh, but it's everywhere there, uh, even the number one at the top. But we'll see. With that being said, starting with those receiving votes, Southern Jaguars, they stay at two and two, one and oh in the conference players. They did not play. Tennessee State Tigers get a late touchdown to get it done. This time they get the win against Charleston Southern, unlike last week. Uh, where they were trying to make a winning drive. So those corrective actions have been made. Texas Southern is off. Tennessee State is off the mat. Unlike Texas Southern, they defeat Charleston Southern Buccaneers 13 to nine in that final. With that being said, South Carolina State uh, continues to do what they need to do. This is what uh, Dave was alluding to as Carolina, the state Bulldogs improved to two and two. Defeated North Carolina A&T State Aggies, pulling away late, really dominating the second half, 45-25. to 25. At number seven, Howard Bison, they lost to Princeton Tigers. What is new in terms of non-conference play, particularly against the Ivy School for Howard? Nothing. 30-13 to 13 was the loss there. They fall to two and three. At number six, Jackson State Tigers defeated Texas Southern Tigers, 43-14. to 14. Close for a half because of the defense of the Tigers, uh, but Jackson State got it going and just wore out literally the Tigers as Tigers could not really get anything going. They scored late in that game to make it get off the mat, at least get on the board. Uh, but the Tigers of Jackson State get it done. They improved the three and two, win their first conference game and they're on and marching. And number five, Morgan State Bears lost. Stony Brook Seawolves 22 to three final there. Can't find the offense again. Morgan State one week they have a little offense. Another week it disappears. So a little consistency would be good for the Bears particularly on the offensive side of the ball. With that being said, they fall to two and three. We'll see what that looks like. And number four, we got a little early surprise. Conference play in the MEAC. 
uh, in the Circuit City Classic. North Carolina Central got the message that it was a conference game. Norfolk State, the Spartans did not. As Central <laughs> dominated that matchup 37 to 10, and Central improves the 2 and 2, 1 and 0 in the conference place, they are looking good. At number three, Florida and Rattlers had to reschedule a game, game against Alabama AM, so they remain at 2 and 2. At number two, Grambling State Tigers lost to Prairie View. Panthers, this is the game we were alluding to, 36 to 34. AD said Grambling run out of two point plays. Prairie View and the Panthers, they were happy of that because they finally got one to work and they win 36 to 34. And five <laughs> overtimes, they get the trophy game as they win in the State Fair Classic. Uh, in front of everybody that was at the fair by the time the game ended because it was five overtimes, and that's just a lot of football to watch. Unless you have to be there as the SID or one of those media folks that was like, man, can somebody please get a two-point conversion? Right. <laughs> turkey legs for sale, turkey legs for sale. Ready by, to go the home. They, by the time they got over there, the turkey legs were sold out. Number one. <laughs> turkey legs turned into chicken. <laughs> hey, Williams chicken, if you're from Dallas, lost the win. William and Mary's talking about Williams chicken, 49 to 7. Have to score the first touchdown. I was like, okay, they read it. Then they forgot that they are allowed to score again in the rest yeah, of the game. Three mm -hmm. and two, 0 and 1 in conference play. Everybody was excited, and most people said that. Hampton, enjoy your number one ranking for one week, and then we'll talk with you uh, next season. But that wow. being said, wow. we still do have AT on the schedule. Throw one more jab at Dad. <laughs> it is the homecoming, too. So, with that being said, <laughs> Let's go to our first thing and come back on the other side as we reveal the top seven, starting with the three outside receiving votes in the next segment. We'll be right back after this first break. Hey, grab me one, too. Brian Fulford, A.D. Drew, and I are co-hosts of the BCSN Sports Wrap. We talk about all things related to HBCU athletics. From the games, teams, coaches, and fan interest stories, we cover it all. You can find our shows on Facebook at BCSN Sports Wrap, YouTube at MyJBN Online, and everywhere you listen to podcasts like Anchor, Spotify, Google, and Apple Podcasts. You can also find the show on the Jericho Broadcast Network's app. Make sure to download. We look forward to you joining the conversation and being a part of the show. This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dashboard as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Choice Hotels is a family of brands that helps you get the most for your money so you can be any traveler you want to be. You could be a free hot breakfast hero at a comfort hotel. Yes, that's how you waffle. Mr. This Script got a plot twist at a Radisson Hotel. A business big leaguer. Go for key. Even the ultimate pool float inflator. With 22 brands and the best value for your money, Choice Hotels has a stay for any you. Book direct at choicehotels.com, where travels come true. Gotta get the corners. When you're looking for the latest information on Southern University sports, the Southwestern Athletic Conference, and HBCU athletics, there's only one place to go. Tune in to the Carlos Brown Show, exclusively on the Black College Sports Network. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. We have Kyle T. Mosley uh, joining us to give his analysis as we drop down the top 
seven in the poll rankings in week number five. Again, we'll start with those teams uh, dropping out of the poll this week uh, in regards to that. And you'll see a refrain that you either have to have a winning record or at least a non-losing record to seem to be involved in this top seven. We'll see what that means uh, as things continue, but let's get into the top seven. Dropping out this week was Howard Bison. Uh, they fall to two and three. The Morgan State Bears, they also fall to two and three. Uh, receiving votes was seven Jaguars. They are two and two, one and oh in the conference race. Uh, they did not play this weekend, but they stay in the mix. Also receiving votes was Alabama State Hornets, two and two. They got a win over Bethune Cookman. Bethune Cookman made a big rally, but it wasn't enough to get it done as they fall at home. Alabama State gets the big road win with 134 points. Alabama AM, the Bulldogs, and did not have to play, so they stay at 2-2 two and two, mm. uh, and are able to get some votes just outside of the top 10. Looking at the top seven, South Carolina State Bulldogs with their win over a and uh, mm. They jumped back in the poll this week. They're 2-2 two and two, mm. uh, with 160 points. At number six, Ramblin' State Tigers. They fall four spots. They're still in the top seven. They're 3-2, and 0-1 oh overall, 167 points. All right, number five, you have the Tennessee State Tigers, a three and two, one and one, 175 points. They were not ranked, but they jumped back in the hole as they win their second OVC game and a 500 in the OVC, getting a much needed road win. At number, I mean, home win. Not many fans saw it though, under 2000, as they continue to struggle in terms of their fan base. At number four, Jack State Tigers, uh, they are three and two, one and zero. Oh. Uh, they got a big win. In Houston, everybody likes to come to Houston. Sometimes it seems like it's the get right place. It's the Tigers to change that, man. Get, get these folks out of Houston. I don't know. What it is. We need a little too com- com- comfortable for these folks. Mm. With that being said, Jack State 186 points. They move up two spots after the win. Rebounded from last week's defeat at Gramlin on the road. At number three, Hampton Pirates. Fall uh, from the number one ranking that lasted all of one week. Uh, they are three and two, zero oh and one, but they still in the top three teams. They still have one first place vote. Somebody believes in them, as you see uh, going through the dropping uh, out polls. You see the poll here as we get into number two. As the countdown continues, looking at these releases here. Thank you, Drew, for getting the pictorial for everybody. Looking at number two. FAMU did not play this week, uh, but they still move in the poll rankings because what happened to teams above them? They moved the three to number two, three first place votes uh, remaining with those three first place votes from last week, 218 points. At number one, I'm not sure if this is a surprise to anyone. The Eagles actually regained the number one spot, three and two after a big conference win in the Circle City Classic over Norfolk State, dominated particularly for the first half. Let off the gas just a little bit and still rolled in that victory. Walker is showing that he is the truth. They gain first place votes uh, as well as they move up, and now they have seven, 222 points. They move three spots up in the number one ranking. Again, this is your top seven. Uh, let's go through everybody here around the horn, if you would. We're going to start with Kyle T. Mosley since you just joined us and give us your thoughts. Well, first of all, thank you. Good morning, guys. Um, well, we know Trade the Truth Oliver is really taking control of the the MEAC right now at number one. FAMU not having a chance to be able to play AM. Uh, I still have to give those guys 1A, 1B, in my opinion. I am surprised about Hampton being <laughs> number three and, and receiving a first place vote. I don't know if that was coach doing that, uh, giving himself a vote there. But uh, when you look at what Hampton has done, they've been a very good team. Still, in my, I still think there's a lot of questions there, and uh, I would have put more Jackson State at number three versus Hampton. And and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not too sure Tennessee State should be at that at that level right now if anybody i would give either south carolina state 
or mm. Grambling, that mm. number four ranking. Uh, I think Jackson State should be number three. So those are just my immediate thoughts right now. I like that. How far do you drop Hampton? Mm. Uh, they'll be number seven. <laughs> they just get by. Just get by. That's yeah, tough. They'll be number seven. That's exactly. tough. Wow. <laughs> Dave, what are your thoughts? tough on the wow. Pirates, but – uh, That's I, I think you're not. I'm still not convinced. <laughs> I like it. I like it. It's your truth. That's Tell it. tough. That's it is his truth. Top seven. Yeah. Um. As much as I don't like those guys in number one, they absolutely deserve to be number one. Um. <laughs> what are you saying? Um, Charles? No. Not saying the name. <laughs> um. Those guys. <laughs> those guys. You wouldn't even school down the road. I love it. I love the, it. the boys in Durham, but they deserve to have the top <laughs> spot. <laughs> um, they they deserve to have the top spot. Um, there's no question. Walker Harris is legit. There's no there's no doubt about that. They're pretty good defensively as well. Still wondering what the heck happened against Elon at home, but you know they got some more out of conference games to go. Um, but I'm not mad at those guys being number one. Um, fam, you the art of the buy, right? The art of the buy, and the demise of others, which brings me to Hampton. But I'm not mad at Hampton at three. Um, but they're going to have a tough road ahead. They got to play a couple more top 25 opponents on the CAA schedule. Uh, the only gripe I have is I don't, I probably wouldn't put Tennessee state as high as five. I probably would have them seven, but outside of that, I'm not mad. At, I'm not mad at the rankings. Hey man, we, we both of y'all can't have Hampton and Tennessee state at seven, but I like, boy, uh, y'all get them out of their he, fans. He, yeah, these, he had Hampton at. I thought he had Hampton up. down there at seven. I did, yeah. Hampton at seven for me. All right. <laughs> Let me go to you, AD Drew. What are your <laughs> thoughts in terms of the poll ranking? These guys do not play with the independence. Are you going to give them any love? Of course not. That would that'd be too much like right. <laughs> but do they really deserve any love right now? Uh, hey, there you go, AD. Don't do that. Now, come on, guys. Come on, AD. There you go, AD. Uh, well, well, you don't, don't let me start with your school, Dave. I mean, y'all, hey, it's, it's been a while. Y'all haven't, look, y'all haven't showed up in about three, four weeks. Y'all haven't showed no, up. No, we haven't. Y'all. Look, we've given up 500 Goodbye. yards of offense at every game against a Division One opponent this season. You ain't got to tell me. <laughs> And how many did you give up against that Division Two opponent? Oh, don't answer that right now. Uh, I don't think it was five hundred, but it was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but but here, here's my point. You remember the Tupac song "All Around the World"? This is the same song. Where have we seen this at before? Yeah, North Carolina Central, FAMU, one and two. We've seen that Hampton. Starts out early, they get to the number one spot, and then they just slide on down the pole. By by homecoming season, we'd have forgot all about the Pirates. Charles, got red a, cup, red, red cup. Then you got, <laughs> then well, you maybe got a, we ja- get a blue cup for Hampton and Blue and Great. <laughs> yeah. then, then, then we got a Jackson State team who who who, hang, who hangs around, sit, sit there at the number two spot in, as far as the SWAC teams go, and then same thing with Tennessee State. They start off at the top. Don't quite get to number one, but they get into that top three, and then they slide on down. So that, that's SOS. Same old stuff that we have seen the last two, three years. What's new this year is Grambling is back into the football business, although somewhere in the SWAC office, somebody messed up the memo because the SWAC Official record has Grambling listed at 0-2 in conference, but Grambling's website has them as 0-1, and we found out last week that that game did not count. So somebody Mm -hmm. needs to send a communication so we can get this stuff uh, straightened out. And the resurgence of South Carolina State under Chennis Berry. Chennis Berry Mm -hmm. does what Chennis Berry does. So... You know, it, it, it's going to be interesting. The only thing I'm going to say about this MEAC record, who will Delaware State play spoiler to? Because yeah, that is not one happen. that you, you can no longer chalk up as a W on your schedule. I just want to remind folks that that, that uh, school in Durham and South Carolina State, they play in Orangeburg this year. Mm-hmm. And Orangeburg mm-hmm. is a house of horrors, particularly from North Carolina schools. Mm-hmm. Sure, right. You mm-hmm. sure right, and that's been the last couple of years. We've seen that even when supposedly Central comes in there or A and T with a better team, it hasn't worked out that way uh, to get it done. And when you talk about Delaware State, before I go to you, Charles, for your final thoughts on there, let me give you some updates in terms of that schedule for Delaware State 
when they get into conference play. Uh, Delaware State goes to South Carolina State. Mm. Um, they go to Howard, but then they host Morgan State. They go to Norfolk, and they host Central, the last game of the season. So it would be interesting there uh, what that may look like, to your point. With that being said, Charles, top seven, what are your thoughts in terms of week number five? Any surprises to you? Uh, no real surprises. I'm, I am going to slide South Carolina State up. That, that was impressive uh, yesterday. I'm, I'm probably going to slide them up at least to – uh, uh, the sixth spot, uh, with Ramlin, uh, kind of, uh, I guess holding down the bottom there. Ah, Tennessee State and Hampton. I- I'm still gonna give you another week to kind of prove it to me. I, I, I don't want to kick you out just yet, but it's, you know, I-, I see where things are starting to go once we get to October. Uh, impressive outing again, or uh, Walker Harris having a more of a Walker Harris look yesterday. Uh, that was impressive. Four touchdowns, uh, 19 of 25, if I'm not mistaken. So, uh, North Carolina Central, very deserving of that uh, number one ranking. Fam, you, uh, I, I, I kind of like how I like what Kyle said 1A, 1B. Uh, but we get to know really next week with Fam, you in Alabama State, Fam, you on the road in Montgomery. That's going to be a fun one. Jackson State, tremendously impressive performance last night. And if you can get consistent play out of Jacoby and Morgan, uh, they become a real dangerous team. I like the way the defense was really flying around uh, last night. And to me, a healthy Irv Mulligan gives this Jackson State offense a physicality and identity, and everything kind of everything kind of blossoms off off of whether he's healthy or not. So uh, we'll see what this Jackson State team looks like going forward. Yeah, certainly. Charles, get... Can Go I ahead, add, add some? Charles, last night, Irv was on the sideline being attended to by the medical. So that's something that we're going to have to look at to see how he uh, handles that. Uh, but one thing I can say from last night's game here in Houston, I think the consistency, and we, we talked about it afterward, how consistent can this Jackson State team be for the rest of the season? If we can see consistency from – Mr. Morgan, I think they are dangerous. Yeah, I, I think that's going to be the question. What we're starting to see in the SWAC is there are several championship-level defenses, mm-hmm. but there are a lot of offenses struggling. Some of that is due to what we came into the season talking about, new quarterback play. Yeah. And worse off, in the second line of that is what you're having is in a, the inability for quarterbacks to stay healthy. So a lot of teams are playing with their second quarterback so whoever can get healthy one two get some consistency on the offense beyond being able to run the ball getting a decent pass game whether you're in the eastern division or the western division is going to go a long way into selling who's going to make it in the swag championship game and ultimately probably who's going to win it last thing i will say that FAMU Jackson State game that moved from Labor Day weekend to late in the season is going to be a clash of a Titans. I will only throw in one thing: is the Alabama State Hornets, who defensively can play anybody, and they certainly play well against both of those teams. As they went on the road, got a win against Jackson State over the last couple of years, yeah. namely for homecoming, mm-hmm. uh, and then obviously playing FAMU tough at home. And guess what? <laughs> Damn, you goes to Alabama State next week to kick things off, so we might get our first indication of what that looks like. Fam, homecoming too. Weeks, yeah, homecoming. So it'll be what? Yeah, I'll yeah. be, I'll be, I'm, I'm flying down for it next week, later this week. That's it. It'll be interesting to see what that looks like. So things start to get real good real quick. I promised that I'd get these gentlemen out, Kyle and David, but they did a great job breakdown in terms of what that looks like. You can catch Kyle. Sports Illustrated, HBCU, as he continued to give you updates. Check out his videos. We did a nice interview after the game and some of the legends here in Houston. So I appreciate him yeah. asking some questions. Check out That's Coming from Kyle D. Mosley. He also does a lot of great work for those NFL folks out there. Check him out in terms of his reports with the New Orleans Saints that are hot right now. They got to bump a little bit. Or check out Dave as he gives you his updates in terms of Carolina. You see he can – Stick out his chest just a little bit today as they got a big win <laughs> last week. Um, so credit to him in terms of the great work that they can do diversifying, not only giving you eight updates on HBCU sports, but they can do it at the NFL. Charles getting a little smile as his Cowboys got off the mat Thursday against the Giants and got a win. 
AD Drew, I know you like me. Uh, we stick with HBC Sports. We'll follow that NFL stuff some other time because, you know, I don't watch. But I, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Don't just get me wrong. With that, we'll take our next break. We'll come back on yeah. the other side, talk a little bit more about with Charles and AD, some of these games that they saw yesterday, what stood out to them. Uh, and we'll go around uh, the horn, if you would, in regards to that. And then we'll get you looking forward to next week uh, to see who is able to get off the ledge or who may come to the ledge of uh, matchup on next week. Ooh. Stick with me right back after this second break. Hi, Norfolk State. Thank you. At Auto Masters LLC, <laughs> our mission is to serve our community by providing quality automobiles at affordable prices. All of our vehicles are inspected and certified to offer you the confidence in knowing you have a quality vehicle. Our goal is to provide you with a seamless process and positive experience for your automobile purchase. Financing recommendations and specific vehicle inquiries are available at your request. You can find us at www.automasters06.com and like follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Also, please feel free to contact Terrence Miles at 601-927-7794. And oh yeah, tell him Sonya sent you. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they wanna love that, and who the bomb, who the bomb. So listen to Professor Yes Sir, and pay attention, cause he gon' teach a lesson. This is Dr. Ville inside the HBC Sports Lab with Charles Bishop and A.D. Drew. That being said, Charles, I'm going to go to you first and get you some of your games. What stood out yesterday uh, in terms of the scores? Obviously, I broke down some scores in the top seven. I thought Virginia Union, the way they dominated Shaw, I know you jumped out there and said you thought Shaw was ready. Yeah. Um, not only did they lose, but Virginia Union kind of stuck their chest back out there and said, I know y'all wanted the barriers and put some dirt on it, but not so fast. Mm -hmm. What else out there uh, besides that game that kind of catches your attention? Well, uh, obviously, the, the five overtime uh, thriller uh, last night, Dallas, when you talk about uh, Prairie View and Grambling, uh, Prairie View being pushed to the brink uh, last night and to be able to fight through. And the playmakers came out to play, and they made some plays. That's got to excite Prairie View's fan base to know that you can get the ball in the Shamar Savage, Kobe Cabell, get the ball to the playmakers' hands, and they can make some plays for the offense to show up being when they absolutely had to. That was huge. Uh, and I, I think that was, you know, big for Prairie View last night. The other one that jumps out at me, I did not see North Carolina Central, like, like thrashing Norfolk State the way they did. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a very impressive win from North Carolina Central. That's a statement win. That, that's the one that, you know, I say every week there are going to be some games that kind of turn your head. That's one that absolutely turned my head. And of course, we were there last night for Jackson State getting back off the mat uh, against some, what was going to be, I thought was going to be a stern test with Texas Southern. This was a Texas Southern team that uh, coming to this game, uh, they had been playing just much better football but in terms of just looking at the brand of football, the physicality part. Uh, knowing that they can run the football, I thought Jackson State would be tested pretty well. They answered the test uh, in terms of stopping Texas Southern's running game and then showing some offense last night. And then, like I said, we could if you see Jacoby and Morgan uh, play more consistently in terms of not turning the ball over, all of a sudden Jackson State becomes a team that you kind of kind of keep an eye out for, especially if the quarterback play continues to improve. Good one. I also say this about Prairie View. Prairie View's defense is kind of in the line, if not folks really frustrated with how they play, particularly late in games. Uh, but I think they get uh, a bit of kudos in terms of this matchup uh, as they were down 17-7 in that first half. They mm. essentially shut out Grambling except for a tough fourth and 18 that allowed Grambling to score the final touchdown to send it to overtime. They essentially shut out Grambling and made a statement in that second half, a second half they had to have. So I wanted to give the defense for Prairie View a little love, the defensive coordinator. I thought that was a significant uh, play in the second half to even put it to that. Again, uh, that fourth and 18 will stick in a lot of people's crawl, but the fact they got the victory uh, in totality, I think if you talk about it, Great point on Gram, uh, uh, Gramlin Prairie View State Fair Classic. 
about Prairie View literally getting off the mat in the second half, including overtime to find a way to get it done, to get a pause on those Prairie View folks that were on the ledge and, as you would say, starting to look at basketball season. Well, Norfolk State may be already there. A.D. Drew, what game stood out to you? Uh, well, I'm going to start off with the game that I was praying that would end so I could go ahead and go to bed last night. That so you can see me in your poll results? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, obviously, you, you know, Dr. Kavir, I forgot to send them in last night because that game <laughs> went off and I fell asleep, you know, with some uh, adult libation you know, as I was watching that game. So I had to get up this morning and hurry up and send the poll to you. You probably need it if you watch that. I was about to say, you watch that. that. You uh, uh, Grambling, <laughs> yeah, but uh, let's let's talk about the drive that Grambling had to even force the game into overtime. Wow, I mean, wow. I mean first of all, to have the one touchdown called back by a holding penalty, I believe that was like a 37 or a 38 yard strike. Uh, yep. To have that one called back and then to come back a couple of plays later and basically moss whoever the defensive back was for mm. for Prairie View to get uh, on that fourth down to catch the ball. I believe it was at the 10 yard line where the uh, ball was caught. At. I mean, that was a great, tremendous athletic play. And I, I'm sorry, I don't have the receiver's name in front of me, but that was just a tremendous play by the. Uh, by Part the of that is not your fault. We're still looking for the statistics. Um, oh, okay. No, it, then, it was it was it was a late night, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> it was a late You're grace. Right. Give them grace. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, right. yeah. But uh, yeah, that was just a great drive there by Grambling at the end, and for Prairie View not to have that. Oh, here we go again. Uh, mentality, considering that they had just yeah. lost to Southern uh, mm-hmm. in a similar fashion with a, a late uh, late touchdown to force the uh, game be tied and then obviously they lost that game uh in overtime so a uh, great job by Prairie View with their with their resilience uh but let, let, let's go to the CIAA where it seems like order <laughs> may possibly mm-hmm. be restored I like that po- I like possibly that. be restored I think we have one additional week of crossover with the old north versus the old south so Let's see if that if the Virginia schools uh get their get their mojo back. Uh obviously what what happened to Fayetteville State, you know, Fayetteville State don't have that South to rely on anymore to get to make their way to the championship game. Johnson C. Smith right now looks like they are the class of these of the CIAA. Hands down, they are the class of the CIAA. The two Virginia schools uh, did what they needed to do after the non-conference conference conference game that they played last week. And can Clark Atlanta once again, can you get off to a league? Can you show up before halftime? I need Clark Atlanta to show up before the, before the band. That's all I need y'all to do. Show up before the halftime performance and play Man. and play some ball so we can see how good you really are. Maybe, Drew, maybe it's Stop. the bands that fired him up in the second half. You're right. They, they might get the memo that they are allowed to start in the fourth first quarter when the with, ball is kicked off. Where the band need to watch it, need to watch in when the buses get there. You know, <laughs> then they then the zero quarter, they need to do their halftime performance, and then at halftime, they need to do their fifth quarter performance. Something to get uh, Clark Atlanta motivated because I don't see how you can sustain this and continue to win in a, in a long season by waiting to the back every every dog on week. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, obviously, a couple of weeks ago, the Southern Heritage Classic probably started off some of those major classes up there. They had 27-584. Uh, but uh, Gramlin and Prairie View get out the gate big time in terms of this matchup. Not only did they have a classic in terms of five overtimes, but the attendance was listed as 52-323 oh. um, to kind of kick things off for the major classic. So. Good starting point, uh, really good attendance, and every bit the fans were there to cheer it on, particularly early. Uh, to your point, Drew, I really like what you said about the CIAA. 
potentially they're already being restored with Virginia State, Virginia Unions getting solid wins. But you still have at the top of the poll Winston Salem State and John C. Smith, as you said as well, that are still saying, "Hey, October twenty six, we want to have a piece of this." October twenty six is a date to watch as we have some key matchups. So I like what you said there. Going back to the Prairie View and Grambling game, to put an emphasis on your point that Prairie View got off the mat, particularly after that late score, giving up a fourth to eighteen, things started out in a lot of ways. Uh, <laughs> Lennon Blows already got his. Right. Hey, he fired up. He is head. fired up. <laughs> <laughs> wow, he got a quadri of coaches that he's putting on the hot seat. Uh, with that being said, as I was talking about that game, is after Grambling scored last time, Southern did the same thing. They got the ball first. Grambling didn't score on the first play, but they scored on the second play, rushing up. Prairie View gets the ball. They go in. They get down to the line, and their first two plays don't work. So they get the third down, and you like, literally, is it going to be a replay of what you saw last week? They get the touchdown on the third down, and we're able to kind of get things rolling in terms of forcing it and going back and forth and playing some defense. But you're right on it, A.D. Drew, as you said, to see the bounce back uh, as things were looking bleak in a lot of ways for Prairie View. But Prairie View put on their Western Division Championship hat if we want to use that card, and push forward. So I got a lot of good stuff there. Let's take our last break, come back on the other side, and talk about some games to watch next week. As we start to get a little deeper in this conference play and things start to unveil themselves, we'll see what these two gentlemen say about that. Stick with us as we get back after this last break. It's never too early to plant the seed, to share the tradition, and instill a sense of pride in your HBCU with your little ones. HBCU Pride and Joy Children's Boutique helps you share your school spirit with a wide selection of adorable kids apparel and accessories officially licensed from your favorite HBCU. Visit HBCUPrideJoy.com and follow us on all social media at HBCU Pride Joy on Facebook and Twitter. Supermarket sushi, really? No. Wait, Troy, you work here? I'm never not working. Like head and shoulder scalp shield technology, up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. Never not working, huh? <laughs> oh, Troy, you're such a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> never not working. Never not working. Never ever not working. Are you serious? Never not working. Dandruff protection that's never not working. Head and shoulder scalp shield technology. Hey, grab me one, too. Charmin Ultra Soft has so much cushiony softness, it's hard for your family to remember. They can use less. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Oh, excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Sorry. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. So it's always worth it. Now, what did we learn about using less? You gotta roll it back, everybody. <laughs> we all go. Why not enjoy the go with Charmin? This is the Dean of the College of HBCU Sports, Kenyatta Cavill of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Come mix it up in the lab where the course lecture is in session every Tuesday from 6 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time on Facebook Live, YouTube, Spreaker, or the BCSN app. As we discuss all things about the HBCU sports culture, including exploring the week that was in the sporting HBCU dash as well as the upcoming week of HBCU Sports. With me, the Dean, the College of HBCU Sports, on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Watts and Charles Bishop. Course lecture dismissed. Compress the analytic data with your hip hop If you know them like I know them They gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot of And who the ball, who the ball so listen to Professor uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. and pay attention because he gonna teach a lesson. 
This is Dr. Bill with Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Let's get into some of the games coming up in week number six. I'm going to start at the major division level with the MEAC, and then we'll slide on through and see uh, what these gentlemen think. And then we'll get some uh, thought process on some key CIAA games and SIAC. Let's first start that we have a couple of uh, SIAC matchups that had to move from Saturday to Sunday. We'll keep our eyes on that to really close out things in week five. So we get a little bit of bonus football, if you would, because things were pushed. And we pray and hope everybody um, is weathering uh, what came through uh, this yesterday in terms of the hurricane uh, over Friday night and Saturday morning. But that being said, um, St. Francis at Delaware State. Uh, can Delaware State get over that hump and get them their second a non-conference FCS win. They played in some really close games. What is intriguing to me, that brings up North Carolina Central and Campbell. Campbell just played Delaware State and got it done. Uh, Central is coming off hot. They usually play well against the FCS, uh, but obviously they had a tough win earlier uh, at home, but now they're on the road. Can they get things done? Another one is that South Carolina State at Tennessee Tech. Tennessee Tech played Tennessee State. Uh, last weekend and uh, got a win. Will this be a statement for South Carolina State if they can go on the road and show up better than Tennessee State did? Norfolk State is sacred heart. Remember, Norfolk State got off the mat, got it done against VMI, took it on the chin, Circle City Classic. Mm. Can they kind of continue with their up and down season going back and forth? Or will this be the slide that kind of puts things in the wrong direction? And then you have another one of these uh, FCS D2 matchups against HBCUs before last week uh, at, with uh, the kick heard around the HBCU diaspora, if you would, uh, was Clark Atlanta defeating Bethune-Cookman. Morgan State, offensively not there, but Lincoln, Pennsylvania, struggling on both sides, offense and defense. So I don't see any surprise here, but that is a game to keep your eyes on. Let's go to the SWAT where things really start to kick off. Mm. I kind of teased and alluded to this a little bit earlier. We have, um, if you would, FAMU at Alabama State. I imagine that has some people's interest. Arkansas Pine Bluff at Alcorn State. Uh, can Pine Bluff shock everybody and say they will be a player in the West with this game? They're on the road. Uh, we'll see what that looks like. Texas Southern homecoming, much like Alabama State, but they have a little different as they have the Virginia Lynchburg that makes their homecoming rounds this year. Alabama A&M and Jackson. That game is actually in Mobile. Can Alabama A&M get off the mat since they were able to postpone FAMU playing in Mobile? Can they make a statement against Jackson State or will Jackson State start to ride out and create the matchup between Alabama State and FAMU that everybody wants to see? Prairie View is in non-conference play. Incarnate Word, they do have a non-conference win this year against FCS Northwestern State. A little different foe when you talk about Incarnate Word to come in two and two and they've had trouble with them. They got to go to San Antonio to be interesting, but you got to believe Prairie View is feeling a little better. So we'll see what that looks like. And then you have Southern hosting Nichols uh, that uh, got a win uh, as they play uh, that matchup, and we'll see what that looks like as they played Mississippi Valley earlier and really pounded Valley and shut them out 66 to 0. Can Southern do any uh, better than that matchup? Fascinating what you see going on there. As we start to get into our independence, uh, give you some matchups in terms of what that looks like. Yeah, Rhode Island at Hampton, and you have North Carolina at Richmond. I don't see the Richmond even as one consider twice then let's go to our OVC Big South matchup and you have um, after Tennessee State got a win now they take on Lindenwood that's the transitioning E2 but they transitioned for the last two years so we'll see if they're in a different position as Lindenwood comes in at two and three in terms of that matchup while Tennessee State is at three and two with that being said starting with you AD Drew any thoughts on the FCS level HBCU games that kind of catch your attention. 
I'll start off with the swag since that's the page that I have up. Obviously, FAMU, Alabama State, and what's, uh, besides the fact that this is homecoming, besides the fact that geographically this is their closest swag opponent. Yes, Montgomery is geographically closer than Bethune is uh, down at Daytona for those uh, who, are in, who are into the geography. So, uh Already going to have a good crowd because it's homecoming, but fam, you would definitely bring a lot of orange and green to Montgomery, Alabama on this particular day. And with fam, you basically by week game by week game, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if fam, you is going to be able to get into any type of rhythm in this one, especially early uh, against, against Alabama State. Uh, the, another matchup in the state in the state of Alabama, as we're talking about geography, Jackson, Mississippi, is closer to Mobile, Alabama, than Huntsville, Alabama is to Mobile, Alabama, and we already know how Jackson uh, Jackson State likes to travel, so that's going to be another uh, interesting uh, matchup, especially when it comes to the crowd. I'm expecting South Carolina State to go ahead and get this victory against. Tennessee Tech, but the game in the B Act that intrigues me is Central against uh, the Fighting Camels of Campbell mm -hmm. University. Mm -hmm. uh, that one is going to be uh, a definitely a good matchup. Uh, we, we this will tell us if Central is for real and has bounced back from that two game slide that they had earlier. Last one, Independent. I definitely expect Tennessee State to be able to handle. Lindenwood on Saturday. Good stuff. Good stuff. Charles, your thoughts? Uh, let me start off Winston-Salem at, at Virginia Union. Oh, my gosh. I mean, that that's that's going to be a, a good one. Uh, when you take a look at uh, Virginia Union this past week, uh, uh, Jada Byers re reintroduced himself to everybody. You know, he's <laughs> still making everybody remember he's that dude going for 170 yards. So that was going to be a huge game. Uh, I'm like AD. Uh, you you didn't leave any meat on the bone for me today, cause uh, the first thing I thought about with fam you coming into Montgomery, Alabama A&M and, and Jackson State going to Mobile, put those red cups down. Uh, Alabama State troopers will be out. There'll be a lot of traffic. Okay, so <laughs> we got all that going on. Be uh, careful. <laughs> yeah, I mean that, that's 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 going to be a traffic nightmare when you take a look at. Uh, uh, trying to get to those various games or get there early. But uh, obviously, I, I think the question uh, is, can Alabama State, can they pound a rock against FAMU? Uh, they went for over 300 yards this past week. I, Zach Sams is going to have to throw the ball a little bit more, more than the 12, 12 attempts. So uh, that's going to be a very interesting game to watch. And, and we know what FAMU can do from an offensive standpoint and, and, and defense as well. So that's going to be a great game to watch. You know, uh, Alabama a and Jackson State, I think, obviously, with that game, uh, Jackson State has become their 400-pound gorilla for Alabama a and program. Can they get over the hump? I mean, uh, when you go back to, you know, Scootergate, back at uh, that homecoming game with Alabama a and it just hasn't been the same since. So, you know, that's – I think that's 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 going to be huge for Alabama a and Can they get over the hump? That is Jackson State. So those are the games that I'm really paying attention to this week. I'm sure there will be some head turners along the way, but those three games are the ones I'm really paying attention to. Good stuff. Charles uh, jumped in there and gave some D2 matchups. So I'm going to go back to you, A.D. Drew, and talk about some of these D D2 matchups as Charles alluded to some that are on his mind. I'm sure you would agree with a couple of those, um, obviously, at Winston-Salem State, Virginia Union Panthers, this is a chance for Winston-Salem State to make a major statement. They got to go on the road to do it. I'm interested in that matchup next Saturday. Uh, that is at high noon Central Time. Uh, that's one Eastern in Ho Hoovy Field. Uh, the other one that sticks out to me a little bit uh, is the Virginia State Johnson C. Smith Golden Bull. Oh, yeah. Every time you look up, um, you want to um, say Golden Bulls are there. They got another chance to make a major statement uh, as Virginia State, the Trojans, travel to uh, Charlotte, North Carolina to visit John C. Smith Golden Bulls. And at this point, uh, if they can make this statement, if you don't believe in the Golden Bulls, I don't know what is going to sell it to you in terms of what that looks like. So that kind of sticks out to me. 
Uh, Savannah State at Clark Atlanta University. Can I sell you on any of that? Yes. Savannah State has a game today uh, in terms of, of getting it done. It's interesting to see uh, who of those teams will get a chance to kind of step back in the stuff. I think that's fascinating with those matchups moving. Uh, with Fort Valley State, somebody's going to get to 500 in that matchup. That Edward Waters, Tuskegee, can Tuskegee get off the map? Uh, uh, in terms of selling down the fans just a little bit, or will Edward Waters bounce back uh, from the tough uh, loss that they had to kind of right the ship, if you would? I'm fascinated today with that matchup, but then it pushes you back uh, with them continuing to get some other matches based on what they do today. But Tuskegee facing Morehouse, uh, that legendary uh, Tuskegee Morehouse game in classic, they're fascinating to see who can get the win since both teams are struggling. And then based on what happens today for Fort Valley and Edward Waters, they match up next week uh, on a short week schedule based on the games moving today. But all that being said, what direction are you going to on the Division Two side of things? Uh, for me, like you already hit on it, uh, I think Charles hit on it, Winston-Salem, Virginia Union, obviously the sexiest matchup of the CIAA. Oh. Wait a minute, Johnson C. Smith, Virginia State. So <laughs> you got you got you got a couple of, you got a couple of sexy matchups there in the in the CIAA. And for last one, the CIAA, Bowie State, Fayetteville State. This is going to be a bounce back game for one of these two teams. Winner stays alive. Loser is essentially eliminated uh, from that. In the in the race with the Bowie State Fayetteville State game, yeah. Switch it over called. to the uh, switch it over to the SIAC. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I don't. I can't tell you the last time I've ever seen two teams come back and play each other when both teams are on the short week, as Edward Waters and Fort Valley will be this particular week. And, we, and I really want to keep an eye on that game besides the fact that Edward Waters will be uh, playing for Valley on the short week, the Tuskegee Edward Waters game today, because that's going to set a lot of the narrative for next week in the Morehouse Tuskegee Classic. Uh, if, Tus if Morehouse comes in with more wins than Tuskegee, that's really going to be telling that as the granddaddy of them all, the, the oldest uh, longest classic excluding the cl the COVID year in the nation as I believe this is the 88th Tuskegee Boarhouse classic so uh, that's th those are the ones that I'm looking at but I've just got this sneaky feeling Savannah State Clark is going to give us something that we're going to be talking about next Sunday I just have this sneaky feeling mm -hmm. yeah I like those sneaky feelings, and you're right. It's 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 already getting into the mid part of the season. I'm not sure if we can tell anything other than maybe uh, North Carolina Central. Probably could have said something maybe about FAMU, but not having that game played, I think people still want to see what's going on, and you'll get a true glimpse quickly next week. So I'm fascinating when you talk about those matchups, uh, things getting going. With that being said, Let's get ready to close it. Any final thoughts for you, Charles? Uh, great, great, great game last night. Uh, All-time class. We're not talking about Alabama, George. I'm talking about Prairie View Grambling. Uh, instant class. We talk about five overtime games. Uh, we were riveted to it. Uh, we were back there in the press conference with Texas Southern and Jackson State. <laughs> And still, you know, asking questions, kind of peeking down at the phone. So, you know, uh, it's, a, it's excellent when you have all that. But got some great matchups coming up this week. Uh, Alabama State, Florida a and &M. You just don't want to be looking up early in the East because it's going to be uh, tough trying to get yourself back in there. So a lot of fun games coming up, Doc. Yeah, you're exactly right when you talked about riveting in there. I, I, I just got out of the suite. Um, and they gave us our 10 minute call, and Dr. Granger was like, Look, man, we put the games in here, we know what we're doing. But he, even the Texas Southern fans in there, were just on the phone, like, Man, what is going to happen in this matchup? So I get in there, I get in there just enough time to get to TC Taylor and tell him congratulations as he's walking out. I have Deuce with me, 
we go to all these HBCU games, and he's traveling to Alabama A&M for their homecoming uh, next week, a uh, couple of weeks, I should say. So fascinating to see what that looks like. But I'm in there, and Charles over there looking. He says, hey, man, this I say I know him. <laughs> I refuse to ask questions. I'm just listening. I'm in there. <laughs> As they trying to do double duty, looking up to answer questions. I'm like, Charles is doing great work. I was like, I'm sitting this out. Y'all can have it. <laughs> uh, finally got it done. So uh, intriguing in terms of what we do in the media side of this to try to cover it. Like AD Drew said, uh, we're all over the place to try to make sure you can get your news appropriately. Staying up all types of order in the morning to make sure we can get the show uh, going, getting up early in the morning to do that. But we do it out of labor of love. And I want to thank these gentlemen, obviously Dave and Mosley that got it in there. Shout out to B.J. Jones. Uh, the internet would not let him be great, obviously, as they're fighting things in Atlanta. So certainly understand how that looks at. Um, uh, but there is a quadri of group of individuals that support the show uh, on many different levels. And I want to continue to say thank you as we push forward to get you going and closing out just Sunday morning or what took place Saturday from the morning edition. Stick around as we'll close out things and get things going. For the rest of the week with the Sunday evening position uh, with Sports Wrap, uh, with Brian uh, getting it done, uh, Jamie Walker sitting in for A.D. Drew. Uh, A.D. Drew likes to do a little sneak appearance at times, so don't be surprised if he found a way because there's always a nugget that he needs to make sure that you get in terms of what that looks like. So excited for him. One last time as we unveil the top seven in week number five at number seven, South Carolina State Bulldogs. Two and two on the season. At number six, Grambling State Tigers at three and two. Number five, Tennessee State Tigers at three and two. At number four, Jackson State Tigers at three and two. At number three, the Hampton Pirates also at three and two. Number two is Family Rallies at two and two. A new number one in week number five as North Carolina Central Eagles regain the number one spot in this week number five is obviously North Carolina Central Eagles that improved the three and two uh, with seven first place votes. You see it right there. With that being said, let's close it out and let these gentlemen have the rest of the Sunday as they are extremely busy getting things done. I am Dr. Kiana Cavill uh, in the lab. With that being said, thank you for listening to Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Nyadakaville, the Dean of HBC Sports, coming from inside the lab in the College of HBC Sports with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. Again, I want to thank you for listening to Dr. Mills inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 o'clock, Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, we we'll look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. With that being said, all is right with the world, Charles, as the Peruvian <laughs> Panthers stake their claim and get the State Fair Classic trophy back. Stay just a little bit in the race in the Western Division. We'll see how long that lasts. And with that being said, follow me, Dr. Nyata Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I call it Twitter because I can. Inside the HBC Sports Lab 1 on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube on Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Dream big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles. Of course. 80. Lecture. Dismiss. Travel light, everybody. For you NFL fans, I'm...